is don't get permanently stuck on a temporary provision. Don't get permanently stuck on a temporary provision. Because many times, listen, God has provided for us for a season. God has provided us to, you know, to do something for a season. But we get permanently stuck on a temporary provision. What do I mean by that? That God only intended for this to be for a season because God was, listen, God was moving us forward. God was, God's desire was to move us forward all along. Listen, uh, and, but, but, but sometimes, sometimes the, the blessing, sometimes the, the, the provision there is so good, we want to get stuck there. We want to stay there. We, come on now, we want to stay in the fields. And God is saying, get out of the fields already. The season's over. The season's over. Amen. Amen. But, but it was so good because, because listen, because Boaz tells, tells the workers, he said, go ahead and drop bushels for her so that she can pick up these bushels. He said, just drop them wherever she's at. He goes, it's so that she can just go and pick them up and it'll be easy for her just to pick them up because she's not going to have to go scavenge through all the, through everything that was dropped. She just, she's just going to see that bushel of, of wheat, that bundle of wheat right there, that bundle of grain. She's just going to see it and she's going to go pick it up. Listen, and, 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 he, and he tells her, and even let her take from the sheaves that 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 were that already laid out oh man and she began to pick them up because oh man look at this oh man there's a lot here to pick oh man look it just seems and many times God begins to bless us and the provision begins to overtake us listen where we we not only have enough for us but we have a, a come on now a little extra And we have a tendency to want to stay there because it's, come on, everybody say comfortable. It's comfortable. I'm okay right here. I don't need to move on. Why? Because, man, look, they're just, they're just dropping stuff. They're just dropping stuff here, and, and I just go pick it up and put it in my basket. And they drop stuff here, and I just go pick it up and put it in my basket. And, man, listen, I, and, and, and when I went home the other day, man, I had so much, we had to go sell some of it in town. And we not only had enough to eat, but man, we had enough to go out and eat afterwards. Come on now, we went and had us some chicken. I love chicken. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And God is saying it's time to get out of the fields. But if we're not careful, we stay stuck. And what, listen... It was a, in what is a season of the past. That season has already passed. Amen. And what happens, listen to me, what happens when we, when we don't move forward with God, what happens when we don't move ahead with God is that, listen, is, is that the, what was there, what was laid up, what was laid up there for us at that particular time, is, it, listen, it now begins to dwindle and now begins to dissipate because, listen, there is no more wheat growing, there is no more barley growing, there is no more grain growing. And so now what we're finding is that there's nothing to glean, there's nothing to pick up. Why? Because it's all been picked up. But we don't want to move forward. And God is saying, you got to move forward. You got to keep going with me. He, he said, I only, he, and, and this is God, he goes, I only gave you that, that, that temporary provision so that it would focus your eyes on me. But listen, listen to what I'm going to say. Too many times we take our eyes off of the provider and put it on the provision. And that's where we lose it. That's where it dwindles away. Why? Because as long as you're putting your eyes on the, listen, as long as you're putting your eyes on the provision and not the provider, listen, the provision will always dwindle. The provision will always, will always run out. But the provider will always find a way how to get some more to you. The provider will always seek that way that you can, listen, where you can receive it. Hallelujah. time to get out of the fields folks and as I, I as I studied this script I said man I said Lord I said is this for the church or is this for me he says you can't give nothing to me he said you can't properly give anything to the church that that you don't know yourself son he goes a shepherd cannot lead his flock where he doesn't know where he's going he said but I will show you great and mighty things to come 
you understand, I mean, uh, you know, we think, listen, we think that we're not like the children, the children of, of, of the Israelite children. We think that we're not like them, you know, but come on now, you know, we want to pick enough so that we have enough for a whole year. We want to pick enough so we have enough for tomorrow so we don't have to come out tomorrow. We want to pick, listen, and we want to stay there. We want it, listen, we want the manna to keep coming. We want, we, how many know that they couldn't pick manna for more than the day's worth? And the reason for it was that God was saying, you got to trust me daily. God was saying, you got to trust me daily. God was saying, you got to trust me daily. He said, if you're going to walk with me, you got to trust me daily. He said, I'm going to, he said, he goes, I'm going to provide everything, but it's going to be on a daily, everybody say daily. Daily basis. That's why the Bible says, give us this day. What? Give us this day. What? Give us this day. What? What is God going to give you this day? Our daily bread. You know, he could give it for a year. He could give it for the rest of your life. But even if you got it in storage, he said, listen, God has still got some daily bread he wants to give you. Hallelujah. I want to go into the New Living Translation. We're going to read out the New Living Translation. and we're going to, So we're just going to put it all up so that you can read it. Amen. If we can, do we have it up here? On the screen so we can, so everybody can see it because I want to read out of the New Living Translation. Listen, <clears throat> God is saying, God is saying don't get stuck, don't get permanently stuck on, on a temporary provision. Tell your friend right now, don't, tell your neighbor, don't get stuck on a, don't get permanently stuck on a temporary provision. You know, by that same token, don't, listen, can, 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 I, can, can I just wander off a little, can, I'm going to wander off anyways, it doesn't matter what you say. <laughs> listen, for a lot of us, we have to stop making permanent decisions based on a temporary situation. Amen. When we start making decisions that are going to permanently affect us, Based on something that I'm going through right now, guess what? What I'm going through right now is going to change. What I'm going through right now is, listen, God is going to turn it around. What I'm going through right now cannot stay the same way that it is. Why? Because God, the God that created all things, is on my side, and he's going to change it. And listen, but if I make, if I make a decision to do something that's permanent, I'm stuck with my decision that I made. On a temporary situation that I was going through. And a lot of times we cause our own friction. We cause our own problems. Because we begin to, listen, we begin to make permanent decisions. You know, we. <laughs> I told my wife, I said, you know what, babe? I said, I think we need to downsize. I said, you know, we need to downsize. I said, I don't, I, I said, I'm tired of climbing stairs up, you know, stairs down. You know, if I want something from the kitchen, I got to go downstairs. You know, I said, I, I'm, I'm just tired of it. I said, you know what, let's just, let's just downsize. Let's sell the house. Let's move into a smaller house, one story. You know, we only need two bedrooms, three at the most. I said, let's downsize. I said, you know, let's just, you know, we, we don't need all this space. I said, you know, I said, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of yard to clean, a lot of, you know, the pools has got a lot of maintenance to it. I said, you know, I said, man, let's just downsize, you know, and, 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 and because, you know, I was just, it, it was a, there, was a, there, was, there was a little while. Everybody said a little while. There was a very little while where it was just me and her. <laughs> Sister Maria would come over and she would say, man, it's too quiet in here. I said, no, it's nice in here. It's perfect. You know, and if she, and she yelled at me, you know, even, even the dogs outside, even the neighbor's dogs heard it. And so I wanted to downsize because, listen, I was in a, I was in a situation where, you know, I, I don't need that big a house. And, and then all of a sudden, bam, I got four kids. And I'm like, whoo, glory to God, I'm glad I didn't downsize. They'd be sleeping on top of each other right now. <laughs> but you understand, we, we, many times we make permanent decisions based on temporary situations. 
God is saying, don't get stuck on a temporary, don't get permanently stuck on a, on a, listen, on a temporary provision. Amen. Listen, so let's go ahead and get into what I want to say today. He said, man, all that was introduction. It sure was. So we're going to be here till one o'clock. Everybody okay? Say amen if you are. Amen. Amen. I got, a, I got about six amens and about three hands went up. And everybody else says, we're leaving at 12, Pastor. You better cut it because Golden Corral awaits. The chicken is bro broiling. The chicken is cooking right now. Who's got chicken cooking at your house right now in the slow cookers? Come on, anybody? Okay, who's got chicken cooking in the oven right now? Okay, who's frying chicken after, after church? I'm going to your house, bro. I'll be right there. Just, just write the address down. I'll be there. Amen. Listen, listen, God is saying come out of the fields. I said, God is saying come out of the fields. It says, one day Naomi said to Ruth, my daughter, it is time. Everybody say, it is time. It is time. It is time. It is time that I found a permanent home for you so that you will be provided for. It is time. It is time. It is time, it is time, it is time. Hallelujah. Now, listen, folks, you, know, you, you want to know that, you want to know that, you, you want, you, let me rewind. I was thinking too fast, that's what it was. You want to know the truth, folks? The church, is, the church is, is so much in the future that they never see it in the now. Come on now. You, you said, what are you talking about? I know God is going to. Well, if he's gonna, he hasn't. Listen, what does the Bible say in Hebrews 11, 11, 11, 1? Somebody quote that out to me. Anybody know what it says? It says what? Now faith is the substance. When, when, when is faith? Now, right now. Now, Listen, folks, we got to get into the now time. We got to get into the now moment. You understand why? Because God's blessing has been poured, poured out now. Listen, when, Jesus, when I accepted Jesus, the blessing came now. Listen, prosperity came now. Healing came now. Salvation came now. Listen, joy came now. Hallelujah. And she's saying, it's time, now is time to find a permanent home for you. Amen. And he's saying, listen, he say, he's simply saying, he's saying, you got to begin, now you got to begin to walk, listen, in the fullness of his provision. Amen. You got to begin to walk in the fullness of his provision. Amen. Amen. She says, my daughter, it is time that I found a permanent home for you so that you will be provided for. He said in this home, he said, come on now, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And at the end, what does it say? It says, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Because if I dwell there, listen, there is no lack of food. If I dwell there, hallelujah, there is no lack of provision. If I dwell there, hallelujah, there is no Listen, there is no sickness, there is no disease. Why? Because in the house of the Lord, there is nothing but blessing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah. Listen, go to verse 2. It says, Boaz is a close relative of ours and he has been very kind by letting you gather grain with his young women. He says, see God is setting the tone to move her forward but she's gonna have to trust him. Verse three, verse three is, verse three is the bridge that's crossing us over into the permanent blessing. Verse three is, 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 is the bridge that's crossing us over because listen, she's gonna have to trust. Ruth is going to have to trust what is being told to her. Ruth is gonna have to trust what is being said to her. She says, she says now do as I tell you. Well, I'll go back to verse two. It says, Boaz is a close relative of ours and he has been very kind by letting you gather grain, listen, with his young women. 
But tonight, tonight, oh, wait a minute. You can't go to the fields at night. So in order to, in order to fo move forward with God, you got to understand. Listen, what does he say? Tonight will be the winnowing barley at the, at the threshing floor. So you got to be ready to move forward. You got to be, you got to be willing to move forward. You got, listen, sometimes you got to be, mm, come on now, I'm going to say it. I, I like the way Andy Stanley said it. Sometimes you got to be willing to leave the good things behind so that you could move into the better things that God has for you. Let me say that again. That was good. If, 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 listen, even if you didn't get it, sometimes you got to leave the good things behind in order to move forward to what the to, to the better things that God has for you. Amen. And so many of us are stuck with the good things. Oh, it's good here. Oh, I got it good right now. Oh, everything is going good right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, how many? I, come on now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. How many have ever been through one of those situations where you know, I man, everything was going good, everything was great, and then all of a sudden it just all dropped out. Did you ever think that maybe it was the season and the season was over and it was time to move forward? But listen, you were trying to stay in that season and the season and the season ended. And because the season ended, everything dropped out. And he says, tonight. <clears throat> tonight will be the, the winnowing and uh, the winnowing. They, they, they will be winnowing barley at, at the threshing floor, not in the fields anymore. Tell your neighbor, get out of the fields. We're in the threshing floor now. Verse 3. <clears throat> it says, now do as I tell you. I wonder how many times God has told me, now do as I tell you. And, and listen, now everything is going to be great. Amen. Now do as I tell you. What, is it, what did he say? He will I take a bath. Don't tell, don't tell your neighbor, take a bath. Amen. Don't tell your neighbor, take a bath. I'm not going to tell Brother Jay to take a bath. I'm trusting Billy's going to do that real quick. <laughs> Let me come over here because he's, he's a little bit bigger than I am. And <clears throat> Listen, it says take a bath and put on what? Perfume. And, address, and dress in your nicest clothes. So what is Naomi telling her? What is Naomi telling her? Get prepared. Oh, gosh. I said, oh, gosh. God is saying, get prepared. Get prepared. Get prepared. Get prepared. Amen. Tell your neighbor. Tell, now tell your neighbor, get prepared. Get prepared. He, he, he's going to, listen, he's getting ready to bestow. He's getting ready to tell you some things. He, get prepared, hallelujah. Get prepared. Mm, come on now. You know, before you, mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. Be, when, 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 when you go, listen, when you go and you meet with somebody that you're trying to get help from and you're trying to get, you know, uh, support from, you know, you, you prepare yourself, you prepare your speech, you prepare, you, you, you know, you dress yourself up, you, 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 you know, watch, they called it anoint yourself. They, you know, what, us men, we splash on the best cologne we got, you know, a, what is that, you know, a uh, 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 brute? <laughs> and you smell like a brute? <laughs> but we anoint ourselves, we perfume ourselves with, with, with the best stuff we got. Hey Amen. I said we perfume ourselves and we anoint ourselves with the best stuff we got. And we prepare what we're going to say, expecting to receive. See, God is saying, until you, listen, until you change your expectation. Come on now, how many have had, how many have had some really good seasons in life and then it just seemed like, come, it just, it just kind of seemed like it comes to an end all of it. I was like, wow, it just kind of came to a, that was abrupt, it just came to a sudden end. I know that's happened to me several times. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. I said, Lord, what, what happened here? You know, everything was going great. He said, yeah, it's time to move on. He says, prepare yourself. Then go to the threshing floor. He says, but don't let Boaz see you until, until he has finished eating and drinking. Listen, we're going to read, but I'm, I'm, we're going to jump all the way down 
We're going to jump all the way down to verse 11, but we're going to read all the way through it. And, and just so go, just go verse by verse and stop at 11, okay? It says, now do as I tell you and take, take a bath and put on perfume and dresses, uh, dress your, your nicest clothes. Then go to the threshing floor, but don't let Boaz see you until he has finished eating and drinking. Verse 4, be sure to, be sure to notice where he lies down. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down there. He will tell you what to do. I will do everything you say, Ruth replied. So she went down to the threshing floor that night and followed the instructions of her mother-in-law. After Boaz had finished eating and drinking, he was, listen, he was in good spirits. Everybody say good spirits. He lay down at, at the far end of the pile of grain and went to sleep. Then Ruth came quietly and uncovered his feet and lay down. Around midnight, Boaz suddenly woke up. He was, I mean, he was startled. He woke up and turned over. He was surprised to find a woman lying at his feet. It says, and then he says, who are you? He asked, I, I, am, the, I am the servant of Ruth, your servant Ruth. Now, I, I want you, hold on just for a sec there. I am your what? I am your, I am your what? Servant. I am your what? Servant. Now listen, she is taking her position. She is taking her position. She's saying, I am going to make myself one of your servants. Because as one of your servants, you still have to provide for me. You know what, the, what, what one of the hugest, one of the biggest problems with the church today is? That we're not servants, folks. We're children. For you have not received, Romans 8, 15, for you have not received the spirit of, of fear to be in bondage again, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby you cry. You have received what? The spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Abba, Father. And, and, and now listen to what I'm going to say, because the, the, the biggest issue that the church has today is, listen, we refuse to take our position as children of God. She was saying the tone, she says, at the very least, I'm going to get blessed because I'm making myself one of his servants. She says, who are you? He asked, and I, and he, I am your servant Ruth, she replied. Spread the corners of your covering over me. She said, cover me. Because it wasn't, she wasn't saying, cover me and keep me warm. No, she was saying, cover me because I belong to you. Take care of me because I belong to you. She says, she says, do for me what needs to be done because I belong to you. For you are my family's redeemer. Verse, nine, verse 10. The Lord bless you, my daughter, Boaz exclaimed. You are showing even more family loyalty than now than you did before. For you have not gone after a younger man, whether rich or poor. Verse 11. Here we go. Now. Everybody say now. Now, now don't worry about, thing, about a thing, my daughter. I will do what is necessary Now, don't worry about anything, my daughter. I will do what is necessary. Now, don't worry, what, don't worry about a thing, my son. I will do what is necessary. Listen to what I'm going to say, and I love it because I've seen it on a Facebook post. But I love, the, I love the post. God is not asking you to figure it out. He's asking you to trust him that he's already figured it out. You're trying to figure out, well, well if I leave, if I leave my, my provision, if I leave my provision, you know, how am I going to get by? I can't leave my provision because and God is saying, don't worry about a thing. I will do what is necessary. <laughs> you know, the next time they want to they wanna, they wanna shut your electric bill off, don't worry about a thing. God will do what is necessary. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. You know, when, l l let me say it this way. When Elijah was running and hiding, and he was by the brook, I said, and he was by the brook. Amen. Who fed him? 
Who fed them? The ravens did. I said, the ravens did. The birds came and brought him food. Are you hear what I'm saying? I said, the birds came and brought him food. Listen to what I'm saying. God will do whatever is necessary to feed you. Mm. Can, can, can I say this? There's a whole lot of people here, you know, they stay up all night worrying about their children. And, and they stay up late, you know, worrying, oh, well, I don't know what's wrong with this kid. You know, this kid hasn't called me. I ain't, I ain't heard from this kid, you know. And, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. My kids, you know, I tell my wife, you know, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep, I say, because, you know, you know, listen, he will do whatever is necessary. Amen. My daughter was pregnant, was going to Wyoming. She was driving on an icy road. She rolled the truck. I said, she rolled the truck. Truck was hang the truck was upside down. The seatbelt was holding her in place, and guess what? The seatbelt was, was strapped across. The baby. And I'm like, and so, <clears throat> listen, they, she, they, they took a knife and cut the seatbelt, and she, she fell out. And she calls me, she says, but we're all right, Dad. I said, no, go to the doctor. She goes, no, we told the ambulance that we were all right just to go ahead and go. I said, no, go to the doctor. She goes, but dad, there's nothing wrong. I said, I don't care. I said, I want to, I, I want to, listen, tell them to check the baby. I said, I got insurance on that truck. And you know what? I said, tell them to do an ultrasound, tell them to make sure that the baby's fine. So, you know, of course, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real faith man. I'm driving at about 100, 105. Wow. I was jamming. Then I have a little old sweet lady call me up at 4 in the morning. She says, I've been up praying for you. And the Lord said that everything's all right. I said, 75. I said, shoot, there's no need for me to kill myself. She's all right. Then my daughter calls me. She says, Dad, she goes, they released us and they're going to drive us to a hotel so we can get a hotel and wait for you. I said, well, how's the baby? The baby's fine, Dad. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with me. She goes, you know, got a couple of bruises from rolling, on the truck, rolling around in the truck, but everything's fine. I looked at the truck. I said, good golly, how is everything fine with these kids? Look at this truck. I mean, the truck was smashed. Oh, I tell you, don't worry about a thing. I will do what is necessary. Amen. Don't worry about a thing. I will do what is necessary. Don't worry about a thing. I will do what is necessary. Don't worry about a thing. I will do what is necessary. Folks, we got to stand on that word. Don't worry about a thing. I will do what is, you know, <laughs> if God needs to get a dog and put some money in the bag and, put, and send the dog to you, guess what's going to happen? God is, there, listen, somebody's going to put some money in that dog. Listen, I remember a testimony Papa Hagen gave, you know, and, and he was believing God for, he was believing God for a certain amount of money and, and, and uh, and, you know, the money hadn't come, and he's believing God, and the money hadn't come. Finally, this man comes to the door. He goes, you know, he goes, I don't believe in God. I'm not a Christian, something, something to that extent. He goes, but, you know, the, the, I just can't sleep. He goes, and, and, and I, know, I know he's speaking to me. I know he's talking to me. But So I'm just bringing you this money. You understand? Listen to what I'm saying. I will do whatever is necessary. Listen. For, every, for everyone in town knows you are a virtuous woman. Verse, verse, verse 12. But while it is true that I am one of your family redeemers, there is another man who is more closely related to you than I. Verse 13. Stay here tonight. In the morning I will, t I will talk to him. If he is willing to redeem you, very well. Let him, let him marry you. But he is not willing to... Then, as surely as the Lord lives, I will redeem you myself. Now lie down here, 
So Ruth lay uh, uh, at Boaz's feet until the morning, but she got up before, I love this, but she got up before it was light enough for people to recognize each other. For Boaz had said, no one must know what this woman, that, that, this, that a woman was here at the threshing floor. Verse 15, I love this. Then Boaz said to her, bring your cloak. Bring your cloak. Bring your cloak. Bring your cloak. Spread it out. He measures six scoops of barley into the cloak. You know, I said, well, you know, six scoops, you know, I mean, you know, if I, if, if I took, you know, if I took, I'm looking for, I'm looking for something. If I took six scoops like this, you know, and let's say this is a scoop. That's not a whole lot. But you know, how many know I can carry, if there's six scoops of this, I can carry it all and I don't have to put it on my back. Because I, I started, I said, I said, Lord, well, you know, I said, you know, I know there's some significance there because it says he put six scoops. I said, but was that a lot or, you know, show me. He goes, he goes, read on. He measured six scoops of barley into, into the cloak and placed it on her back. Now, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to carry something that's even this heavy, I'm not going to carry it like this for very long. You understand. But the reason it was placed on her back is because she had some traveling to do. And so it was going to be a whole lot easier for her to carry this way. Amen. So the amount, now listen, because this is what really blessed me. The amount that was placed on her back was more than she had gleaned. Because what she had gleaned was only what she could gather with her hands and carry and take home. Are you catching me? And she gathered, she gleaned and she gathered daily and took it home. But what she was able to glean was only what, what her hands were able to gather. Oh, thank you, Lord. Now listen, because this is what I'm getting at. But what was given to her, what was given, freely given to her without effort, without working for it, without bending over for it. What was given to her had to be placed on her back so that she could walk a distance with it. Because had she tried to carry it in her arms, it would have been too much. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Boaz loaded her up, turned it into, and, and, and let, me, let me just say, he loaded her up, put it in there, and he put it on her back. Now listen, I can put this on my back all by myself. But something that Something that I may need. Well, let me just do it this way. I can put this chair on my back myself. Amen? Amen. Is it loose? Is it loose? Find me a loose one. Is yours loose? 
But if, but if I'm going to carry another one, he's going to have to place it on there. And if my back breaks, I'm suing him. Just slap it on there. And now, I got more than if I had taken it myself. Are you seeing what I'm saying, folks? What God is trying to give to you is more than what you can work for. What the Redeemer gave Ruth was more than what she could have ever worked for, was more than what she could ever gather. And when we throw ourselves, when we throw ourselves into his arms, in, listen, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Where, where, where was Ruth? Where did she sleep? Hello, where did she sleep? Say it louder. Where did she sleep? At his feet. Where are you sleeping? Because she got loaded for sleeping at his feet. See, too many times we're on our feet and not at his feet. And because we're on our feet, we're figuring we're getting things done. And God can get more things done when you're at his feet than when you're on your feet. Right. Amen. 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 Then Boaz said to her, bring your cloak and spread it out. He measured six scoops of barley into the cloak and placed it on her back. Then he returned to town. Then she returned to town. Go ahead. Verse 16. When Ruth went back to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, what happened, my daughter? Ruth told Naomi everything Boaz had done for her. Listen. And she added, he gave me these six scoops of barley. And she added, he gave me these six scoops of barley. Don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Amen. Amen. You know, you know, can I say this, sis? People are waiting for you to go back loaded. Because when you, they say, she's unstable, she's there. She, they've criticized you from the worst. But when they see you come back loaded, they're going to say something's changed about her. She's got something going on. When God sends you back to those same people that criticized you, they're going to say something is going on. Something is happening in her life. And they see that the only thing different about your life is God in your life. They're going to say, we need that God. We need that. See, see this, this is what we don't understand. When people see everything that's changing in your life and they say, man, man I know this guy. You know, he, he's got this. He did that. You know, he, this has happened in his life. This is, you know, and, and they see all those things. And, and those people that know you and all of a sudden, you know, you, you're a supervisor. You know, wait, wait, he, he's what, man? He's doing, man, that dude is really doing good. Listen, then you go back to your same company. You don't have to say a word about Jesus. They'll see Jesus. See, folks, this is the thing. God is trying to move us forward for his glory. We're trying to get forward for our glory. Let me say that again. God is trying to move us forward for his glory. We're trying to get forward for our glory. And you know what happens when we get forward for our glory? Yeah, we might get ahead a little bit, but it costs us our family. 
because it is all the precious times of children growing up, grandkids growing up, because we're trying to get, get forward for our glory. We're trying to get ahead to make, come on now, we're, I'm going to say it the way the world says it. We're trying to make a name for ourselves. Yet his, the word says, and I will make your name great. Amen. And all we have to do is let them load, load us up. Amen. Because if he loads you up, he's going to give you what you, what, listen, he's going to give you what you can carry. He's not going to give you what you can pick up. The hardest part of a lift is what? When you, when, is it what? Picking it up. Getting it in motion. Once you got it in motion, it's as good as done. See, and he's always going to, listen, so he's always going to load you up with more than you can pick up. He's always going to give you in abundance so that when you go back to your loved ones, listen, I, I, and I've told this story, but I'm, I, it's worth repeating right now. Listen, I remember go, we we're having a funeral over at, at, at the Tanger Outlet, and we were there at the Tanger Outlet, and, 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 a, and a person, listen, a person that I used to pitch watermelon for. God took me out the fields, folks. I ain't, I ain't, I, I ain't even lying. I ain't even lying. And I was pitching watermelons for it. I used to, when I was a young man, you know, we used to go out and pitch watermelons for this man. And, we, you know, I mean, we were, we were, can I say it the way I want to say it? We were dogs, man. We were just tossing the melons, just tossing the melons and all day. And my nephew would get mad at me because I would say, yeah, we'll do another truck. And this man walks into the church. We're at the Tanger Outlet. He walks in and he looks around. He's like, Wow. And then he walks over to me because I'm in the sound booth. I'm not doing the funeral. I'm just, you know, there making sure that the sound, sound tech showed up and, and making sure everything's okay and, and they don't need anything. And, I, and he walks up to the sound booth and he looks at me and he says, cracks me up because he says, this is you? He said, this is you? And I know what he's thinking. He says, you're that snot-nosed kid that used to go out and pitch watermelons for me all the time. And then he looks and he says, wow, man. He says, this is really great. And I said, now listen to what I said. I said, God is really great. And he walked away. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. You understand, God wants to load you up so that when people see you, they know that he's great. And if you do everything for his glory, God will always make sure there's enough for him to be glorified for. But if you're trying to get your glory, you'll probably burn out and run out. And miss the season. Sure. Let me say it one last time. In closing. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Permanently. On a temporary provision. God is moving forward. Now you see. Even this. Even the six scoops of barley. Even the six scoops of barley. How many know that was a temporary provision? I said, how many know that was a temporary provision? The full provision, I said, the full provision comes next week. I said, the full provision comes next week. Listen, how many here need to be saved? Somebody help me raise my foot. You said, what? I asked the question, how many here need to be saved? Yeah, I know everybody thought, 
how many here need to be saved from your sins and you know you're going it i know that's that that's 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 the way we we take it most of the time and you know it's okay it's it that but listen how many know that salvation as as james was talking about it is a progressive thing he said work out your own salvation with fear and trembling I need to work out that salvation in me I need to work it out 